Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Daily Devotions with Vicar Brandon in for Pastor Steve this morning. And we're continuing on through the book of Exodus, beginning at chapter 37 today. Remember, we were going through some of the different details that God gave the people in order to build the different items for worship. We were going through the way in which the tabernacle was laid out and how all the different people brought uh, their belongings and their treasures, uh, donated it to the cause of building the tabernacle. And so today we're going to talk about how they were to design and make the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, which you've probably heard of before, even in pop culture sometimes, is referenced specifically, you know, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. So it's something we know from pop culture. And yet the Ark was something that was very important to the people of God. This was where God's presence was found. God would dwell among his people in the tabernacle, yes, but specifically in the Holy of Holies in which the Ark of the Covenant was there. This is where God would dwell with his people. And so in the Ark, eventually you will have the Ten Commandments put inside, the Staff of Aaron put inside. And so we're going to see some of the details of the Ark, of this table it's talking about here, and a lampstand. And so we're going to go through these sacred objects of worship, um, not that are worshipped, but that assist in the worship of the true God. So we're going to go through beginning at verse 1 in chapter 37. Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. He overlaid it with pure gold, both inside and out, and made a gold molding around it. He cast four gold rings for it and fastened them to its four feet, with two rings on one side and two rings on the other. Then he made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. And he inserted the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry it. He made the atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. Then he made two cherubim out of hammered gold at the ends of the cover. He made one cherub on one end and the second cherub on the other. At the two ends he made them of one piece with the cover. The cherubim had their wings spread upward, overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim faced each other, looking toward the cover. And so we see that this Ark of the Covenant, this box made of acacia wood overlaid with gold, had these two cherub facing each other, wings facing each other on top of the Ark, also these poles in which it was carried. And again, this atonement cover, this is the place where blood would be put on there, again, for the sins of the people. This is another thing we've been talking about, all the different things that point forward to Jesus, that Jesus himself is the atonement for our sins. He is the payment for our sins. Jesus is God with us. He's the presence of God, and yet he's also this payment for our sins, our atonement. Verse 10. They made the table of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. They overlaid it with pure gold and made a gold molding around it. They also made around it a rim a hand breadth wide and put a gold molding on the rim. They cast four gold rings on the table and fastened them to the four corners where the four legs were. The rings were put close to the rim to hold the poles used in carrying the table. The poles for carrying the table were made of acacia wood and were overlaid with gold. And they made from pure gold the articles of the table for the table, its plates and dishes and bowls, and its pitchers for the pouring of the drink offerings. And now on to the lampstand, verse 17. They made the lampstand of pure gold and hammered it out. Basin shaft, its flower-like cups, buds and blossoms were of one piece within it. Six branches extended from the sides of the lampstand, three on one side and three on the other. The th three cups shapes like almond branches with buds and blossoms were on one branch, three on the next branch, and the same for all six branches extending from the lampstand. And on the lampstand were four cups shapes, shaped like almond buds with buds and blossoms. 
One bud was under the first pair of branches extending from the lampstand, a second bud under the second pair, and the third bud under the third pair, six branches in all. The buds and the branches were all of one piece with the lampstand, hammered out of pure gold. They made its seven lamps, as well as its wicks, wick trimmers and trays, of pure gold. They made the lampstand and all its accessories from one talent of pure gold. And then we have this altar of incense. They made the altar of incense out of acacia wood. It was square, a cubit long and a cubit high, and two cubits high, cubit wide and two cubits high. Its horns of one piece with it. They overlaid the top and all the sides and the horns with pure gold and made a gold molding around it. They made two gold rings below the molding, two on opposite sides, to hold the poles used to carry it. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. They also made the sacred anointing oil and the pure fragrant incense, the work of a perfumer. And so throughout chapter 37, we see these different things that are used within worship. Again, this prominent one being the Ark of the Covenant, where God's presence would be with his people. And we also see when it's describing this lampstand, we see these images of buds and this uh, more kind of like a natural image of these things, pointing us back to that time when God dwelled with his people in the Garden of Eden. And yet we know what happened. Mankind rebelled against God, was cast out of that garden, and yet God promised that he would send one who would redeem all of creation, who would make everything right. And so he called Abraham. He said that his descendants would be a great nation. It's from the descendants of Abraham that these people, the people of Israel, are rescued up out of Egypt. They form this nation of Israel. This is how they are to worship their God. And within this worship, God continues to meet with them, pointing them back to the garden but also pointing forward to that day when creation will be restored, when it will be like it was in the beginning. And the person who's going to accomplish that is Jesus, this long-promised Messiah. He's going to be the one who, like the ark, is God's presence amongst the people, except in Jesus it's God in human flesh, tabernacling, dwelling with his people, acting as if he himself was the tabernacle. In fact, he calls himself the temple because he is where people go when they want to see God's action happening. It happens in Jesus. And so we thank God for this gift of Jesus who redeems us, but also redeems all of creation. And we have that promise that through his death, through his resurrection, we are forgiven and set free and that he's coming again to make all things new, that creation itself will be restored to the way that it was. And in the meantime, he continues to come to us in his gifts, walk alongside us, to be with us through his word and through all the promises that he's given us in our baptism, in his supper. Our God is with us and our God is for us. And so I invite you to live for him this day, doing all things to his glory. Have a blessed day.